Michael Chabon has won several literary prizes, including a Pulitzer and a Hugo. He's also the writer of a number of movies, including the spectacularly high-grossing Spider-Man 2 and the spectacularly low-grossing John Carter. Uh, his newest book, Telegraph Avenue, is about a record store and fatherhood and forgiveness and midwifery and race. And he's here to talk about it. Thanks for being here, Mr. Chabon. Oh, I'm delighted. Thank you, Belinda. So, in the middle of this book, it's book three, there is a, a, a section that is 12 pages long and it's just one sentence. Are you showing off? If all I wanted to do was show off, I wouldn't have done it. Um, I would have restrained myself. I really did feel that I needed to find a solution to a problem, to an artistic problem. And I had a sense that the reader might want to know just okay where are we right now before we proceed to the second part of this book it all just came together in my mind i'm just going to try to do a single take essentially a tracking shot in the form of a sentence and it ended up being about four thousand words the central character in this book or one of the central characters archie stallings is black and i and i'm sure you're getting asked this question a lot but didn't you feel a little anxious writing from the point of view of the black guy not while I was writing, I didn't. While I was actually doing the writing itself, sitting in my chair at the computer, putting myself into the mind and the heart um, and the life of whether it was Archie or Gwen or whoever it might have been, I didn't have any doubts or anxieties at all about it. The challenge is always the same, which is can you imagine what it's like to be somebody else or not? That's true, but the thing about race is that it's a much more charged subject. There's a sort of charming character in the book, a lawyer, Moby, who who's, who's takes on the, the, the sort of language patterns of, right. of African-American people right. and drives the white guy nuts, but the black guy just kind of thinks it's sort of harmless. Mm -hmm. you, you didn't worry that you were like him? You know, you didn't say Oh, no, I, absolutely. I mean, there are a lot of ways in this book which, in which I address the question or the problem of a white artist or a white person adopting or appropriating whatever term you prefer styles and 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 uh, characters and and all kinds of other things that are derived from African-American culture and you know um, so one of them is to present the character of Nat one of the main characters in the book who was raised primarily by a black woman in a sense he he could claim to have a sort of an authenticity which he just steadfastly refuses to exercise because he, he he has this bias this prejudice against white people who do that, I'm not going into this with this sort of blind, naive, like people are all the same and if I want to write about white people or black people, there's no difference between us. I mean, I, that is not my attitude at all. I'm fully aware and conscious of all of this stuff. Um, and I worked hard to be careful and to, to be sensitive and to try to get it right. Why midwifery? What, what interested you about midwifery? Uh, well, I mean, it's, I think it has a fair claim to being one of the most fascinating jobs that a human being could undertake to do. I mean, it's so, the drama is so stark. It's, each birth is a, is a novel in itself. So when my wife, with our second child, we used a midwife for for the birth of our second child. And it was in getting to know our midwife and other midwives and just watching them work I just got interested in the work and and I had really loved in uh, my novel The Amazing Adventures of Cavalier and Clay I had really loved the parts of that writing the parts of that book that were about the work of producing comic books that were about not just the writing and the drawing but the printing and the coloring and the inking and 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 the sort of the, the labor and the technology that went into creating a comic book was a fascinating thing for me and it was fun to write about and so I you know, I wanted to write about work again. Well, tell me a bit about your feelings about John Carter. It was very important to me that we had brought the work of a, a writer who's always been really important to me, Edgar Rice Burroughs, to the public's attention again after a long period of neglect, especially of this character, John Carter, uh, car a character that had meant a lot to me as a young reader. I had loved the books. Uh, I felt like we were true to the book spirit very closely. I thought the cast was great. I mean, I really thought it was a good movie and I thought it was going to do well. You know, it wasn't a movie for everyone. Obviously, if, if a movie set on Mars with flying ships, sword fighting, four-armed green guys, red princesses, 
uh, you know, and villainous villains and, and dashing heroes doesn't sound like your kind of movie. I understand that, but, uh, but uh, um, I think that people who enjoy that sort of thing, and I count myself among that group, I thought it was a perfectly serviceable um, product that it did bring pleasure to a lot of the people who saw it. So you come from a two-rider family. It's, it's in my home, you mean. In your yes, home, yes. sorry. Yes, you are part, I should say. Your, your current family is a two-rider family. Yes. Do, you, do you still do that 10 p.m. to 3 a.m. Yeah, riding? that's my usual routine. What that means is I have to sleep in, and therefore I miss the morning routine in my house, so, which I like. I actually love the morning routine, so two mornings a week, I, go to, I don't work the night before or I only work a little bit and I go to bed early at earlier and get up and do breakfast and the run to school um, with my kids just so I don't miss out on that side of life completely. Um, I wish I could work in the daytime and wait till they leave for school and get my work done and be done when they get home from school, but it just nighttime is the right time. Michael Shaven, thank you so much. My pleasure, thank you.